I think unlike many in the Android community and smartphone world as a whole, I never owned a Blackberry device back in the day. The first thing that I owned that sort of resembled a smartphone was a LG Voyager and funny enough that was dubbed an iPhone killer back then. Anyway, the point being, I didn't have much experience with Blackberry devices before I got my hands on the Key One, so I was pretty excited to give it a whirl. Welcome back everyone, I'm Tim for Droid Life, and this is our Blackberry Key One Quick Review. For specs, the Key One features a 4.5 inch Full HD display, Snapdragon 625 processor, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of built-in storage, micro SD support, a 12 megapixel rear facing camera, 8 megapixel secondary camera, NFC for mobile payments, a fingerprint reader, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, plus a 3505 milliamp hour battery. Considering the specifications, this phone is obviously not made to compete with flagships from Samsung or LG, but instead is made for what seems to be a niche of users who really just miss the look and feel of old Blackberry devices. You can probably guess, but the built-in keyboard is the big selling point of the Key One. If you don't want a physical keyboard, you're probably not very interested in this device. However, if you miss the old days of clicking away on your QWERTY, then the Key One might be a treat for you. Now, I have to say, I have used this device for a solid week and I'm still not used to using a physical keyboard. After what's now years of using virtual keyboards, I'm just so used to that that using this device for texting and typing has been pretty darn difficult for me. If you've somehow been using the same Blackberry for almost 10 years, I could see you really enjoying not just this well-built and solid hardware, but the addition of the Android OS too. Not only is the keyboard a bit hard to get accustomed to, but having the smaller display isn't necessarily something I think is awesome either. If you're a big email person and just want something you can browse Facebook or stock prices with, the 4.5 inch display might be okay. But if you plan on doing any video watching or game playing, the smaller display size certainly puts a damper on really enjoying content. On the software side, the Key One has a nearly stock version of Android 7.1.1 Nougat. Blackberry has built in a few tweaks, such as the keyboard gestures you can perform, and they've even preloaded select applications like Blackberry Hub and Blackberry Messenger. After using Hub for a bit, I can see why folks would like it. Having a single app that manages an inbox of emails plus Facebook and Twitter notifications, that can be pretty handy. As for those gestures, if you're inside of an app that requires to swipe through media or content, such as Twitter, you can simply swipe up and down on the keyboard and the UI will scroll around. While this stuff is neat, no doubt about it, the overall performance of the device leaves so much to be desired. When swiping through Twitter or opening Chrome and attempting to view a web page, I am met with so much stutter and even missed touches that I find myself getting very frustrated when using the device. Those keyboard gestures can also be very jittery, causing me just to use the standard screen swiping method that you would do on any other phone. While I'm not a huge fan of the performance found on the Key One, I can at least praise Blackberry for delivering a pretty vanilla experience of Android. There's not a lot of bloat or unnecessary junk built in, so you won't hear me complain about that at all. The Key One's 12 megapixel rear facing camera is a Sony sensor, the same one you'll find inside of the Pixel and Pixel XL. While I don't care for the software as much as what you'll find on the Pixel, it's a solid shooter all the same. Like any other device, when you're in decent lighting you can get some really great shots, but if your HDR is enabled and you're in a somewhat low light setting, be ultra sure your hands aren't very shaky. As for the shutter speed, it's just fine. Not too fast, not too slow. It's a great shooter, one that should serve you very well. The major bright spot of the Key One is its battery life. I was cranking out two days easy on this device with over 4 or 5 hours of screen on time thanks to the miniature Full HD display, large battery, and power sipping Snapdragon 625 processor. This thing was basically made to get you through a full day of emails and business calls easily, so that's a major bonus for anyone interested in the Key One. If you're looking into picking up a Key One for yourself, you can find it unlocked online, priced at $550. Just to throw a few comparisons out there, you can get a OnePlus 3T currently for a bit over $400, or even an unlocked Galaxy S7 for about the same $550 price. Given the specs, I have to say that I think the Key One is a bit overpriced. I think it'd be a bit more tempting in the $450 to $500 range, but that's not up to us, obviously. If you aren't looking to go the unlocked GSM route, you can find a CDMA variant of the Key One 2 made specifically for those on Verizon. To sum up my BlackBerry Key One experience, it's just not the phone for me, but that doesn't mean it's not the phone for you. If you really, really want to relive that physical keyboard experience, be my guest by all means. No one is going to judge you. 
However, if you were only curious about trying out the physical keyboard and didn't necessarily want to lose all of that display size, it's kind of a hard phone to recommend. Considering how good virtual keyboards are, are these days, uh, as well as voice dictation on Android, it's really hard to justify and really hard to see a real point in bringing back physical keyboards. Uh, on the upside, the Key One has great build quality, a good camera, and really great battery life. If you want all of that, plus a physical keyboard on top of it, uh, the Key One might be a good phone for you to check out. That's going to do it for this one. I'm Tim for Droid Life. We'll see you next time. Peace.